I'm not sure if this has ever happened to any of you, but uh, you're typing an essay, perhaps for school, or perhaps a report for work, and you work on it, you work on it, you work on it, and it's done, and it goes, bloop, something happens. Um, it disappears. Maybe there's a power outage or your hard drive crashes or something, and you have to do it again. That's a crummy feeling. Well, that's what I'm doing right now, because I just recorded a 10-minute uh, market video. And uh, although none of those other things happened, it turns out the audio was set so that it sounded like I was talking from inside a very deep cave. And I couldn't do that to you guys. I just couldn't. I want you to hear my real voice. So I'm doing it again. <sighs> okay. Well, I've wasted a minute belly aching, so on with the show. So it was a good day today for the bears. The S&P was down over 2%. The NASDAQ was down over 3%. An amazing 73-point drop on the NQ. The uh, Dow is down 178. And right now, HP is down something like 8%. Um, and so uh, first good day in a while. But I wanted to uh, talk about being cautious in this market based on some uh, some of the history that uh, we've experienced. Um, one false alarm, so to speak, that I, I remember very well uh, was back in February of 2007. Uh, in this instance, the uh, market had been climbing and 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 climbing. And, climbing. and then we got our one day kind of crash on February uh, 27. And... Um, it was sad because a lot of people were like, hey, congratulations, it finally, hey, it's great, you must have done great today, yeah. And I was like, oh, thanks. Um, but it wasn't really that great a day for me because, not surprisingly, I wasn't really very short way back here. I had a few short positions, but pretty much was close to flat because of this relentless rise. Uh, and good thing, too, because um, the market kind of shook that off and proceeded to climb uh, a couple of thousand more points on the Dow. So that definitely taught me that uh, it's not right to get real excited uh, about drops. And so the wedge we had back in 09010 um, lasted a good long time, and but it didn't break uh, for a while. So we had this uh, huge sustained drop and then a rise and then a shorter drop and a rise and a shorter drop and a rise and a and, so, and finally it broke after a very long time. And uh, that was the uh, oh so tantalizingly brief uh, May slash June weakness, including the flash crash after this wedge was uh, broken. But uh, that was only after a long series of teases. By the same token, if we look today at this wedge, we're still within the wedge and it has not been broken. So we had the last meaningful drop in terms of time and price was in August, then a shorter one in November. And I wouldn't even honor these with calling it a drop, but tiny one day wonders uh, in January and then today. So what recent history would suggest is that uh, this is another one day wonder and we'll shake it off within a day or so and we'll push to new recovery highs. Um, I'm not saying that'll happen, but I am uh, uh, sort of cautioning myself in my own trading not to get real excited until we see a real break. Now, uh, just to be clear, I am short. I'm not only short, I'm 100% short with 70% of my portfolio committed. Not 100%, not 150 or 200%, 70% with no big positions. They're all small. Got a whole ton of little bitty shorts, uh, but the big guys that I came into the day with, EEM, SPY, DIA, GDX, those are covered. I don't have them anymore, uh, even though like in the case of GDX, I think it's a terrific looking chart. Uh, this sort of um, uh, one day uh, hit has me scared, and I, I just don't want to do that. So um, still erring on the side of caution. Now, let's look at a few other charts here. Let's take a look at the Russell. This is an interesting one, as I pointed out before, because we have these Fibonacci arcs, which uh, have some very interesting relationships to the price, 
both in terms of support and resistance, and recently getting extremely close to that outer ring, which wasn't really touched until uh, in, in, uh, for a long time since summer of 07. Um, now, if we look closer, as with the S&P, it is still intact. And uh, if it is going to break, there's a couple of ways it could do it. One would be a day similar to today, which I really don't think, barring some political surprise, is going to happen. And the other would be for it to begin climbing, assure the bulls that it was another great JTBD opportunity. I just, but no, JP, and buy the dip, whatever. Another buy the dip opportunity. And then it falters and breaks the trend line. Um, that would be another method by which this could be cracked. Or alternately, it could just um, make an obscene gesture to the bears and just surge up to 900. Uh, it remains to be seen. You know, it, th this was Egypt, as we all recall. A lot of excitement about Egypt. That that didn't yield anything uh, more than a one-day drop. So Libya could be the new Egypt in this respect. We shall see. Uh, let's look at the utilities. Now, this is the red-headed stepchild of the index world. It's boring. Nobody really pays it any attention, but I like little util. It's, a, it's an interesting little fellow because if we look back to 08, this was a wonderful uh, uh, harbinger of the things to come. And this line in the sand has held 416.47. That has uh, not been violated. And if this should weaken, and particularly if it breaks this trend line, um, that would be very, very encouraging news for the bears. Let's look at XAU. Now, uh, on Monday, I, I put in the comments that I, I bet the silver and gold bulls will wish that the market was open on Monday. I'm not talking about your futures traders, which have more access to the market. I'm talking about the ETF folks, you know, the GLD SLV people. And that turned out to be the case because if I told you yesterday that, you know, XAU is going to close down pretty hard today, you wouldn't have believed me. But the fact is, and I know this is hard to believe, I know it seems counterintuitive, uh, but uh, this index has broken its uptrend. Uh, it did so a number of weeks ago, as I pointed out, about actually six weeks ago. Um, it broke the trend line, it's pushed up to beneath uh, uh, this very important line here, and it's starting to weaken again. Uh, it Again, it sounds crazy, but I personally think that um, those who are long precious metals with um, uh, $5,000 uh, ounce gold in their eyes are going to be really disappointed. Um, I also continue to think that GDX is one of the best shorts around. Even though I have no position in GDX at the moment, I day traded it very nicely today. But as I said earlier, I'm not carrying any big shorts overnight right now. Uh, I think this is a... Um, it, this is a market that is, in fact, broken, and it's going to take a while for people to realize that. Um, looking back at GDX just for a moment here, since I mentioned it so many times, uh, kind of a similar to uh, what you saw there. Uh, this was a very pretty gap fill. We have a gap here at 60.40, which we came within seven pennies of today. We've got a nice uh, uh, bearish engulfing pattern today. So um, uh, very to continue to be a very, very interesting uh, graph. So just in closing, uh, and I hope the audio worked better this time, uh, in closing, I would say that uh, caution still rules the day for the bears. Uh, but there, there will come a day, it could be tomorrow, it could be any year, but there will come a day where by the dip blows up in the bulls faces they will buy the dip and the dip will get dippier uh, and here's the cool part they will be frozen they won't know what to do because it has been so long since the bulls have uh, bought something and haven't had uh, Bernanke and company come save the day they won't know what to do so they will sit and they will wring their hands and they will be frozen like a bull in headlights. So that will be a day worth living for. And uh, that will also make it much easier for the bears to run over those SOBs. So uh, anyway, in closing, good day. And I uh, hope we see more to come. But uh, if this was another one day wonder, A, I will be disappointed, but B, I will not be shocked. We have to assume that um, it's still that way. Good night.